and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for February 27th. Uh, I call this meeting to order at 631. Next order of business is public comment. Um, do you have any public comment at this sure. point? Sure, sure. Do you take questions or like the Board of Education needs to take questions? Well, the, uh, what, we, what we usually say is you know, limit your comments to, uh, for, to one time for a two minute maximum, but we're, we're usually pretty flexible on that. And okay. We, right. you know, once we get into the body of the meeting, no, we don't take questions then, and then we have questions at the end. Uh, an opportunity for people to ask questions at the beginning okay. of the meeting or at the end right. of the meeting. That's good. Uh, you might be getting some questions from BOE because I submitted them from their meeting and some of them they deferred and said, well, I need to ask this like. So one of the things I wanted to know was the status of our bond initiative. Um, sure. I've heard that the bond meetings at the state have been canceled. Well, it's just for uh, like the next few months. Well, actually, uh, the Fourth week of March, they're good. They got one that they said they were going to call. Um, so at this point, we don't know what the effect on you know Governor Lamont's debt diet is going to be, and what the effect would be on on, on school funding directly. And in this particular case, uh, you know, roof they usually don't turn roofs down. But anyway, so we're not quite sure right. of what that is at this point. Now, what we are doing is we're lining ourselves up to be ready to go. If, once we find out what uh, uh, what the state situation is, so we're within a week or two of submitting the application to the uh, to the state school uh, facilities, and then uh, we would. So you'll be able to make the March fourth meet March fourth bond meeting. I, at the end the fourth week, it's like the 27th. Oh, fourth week of March. Yeah. Okay. Like the 27th. I was going to say March 4th, that's like next week. That's <laughs> tomorrow, yeah, basically, yeah. So, uh, so, what we'll, uh, so what we'll do is we'll submit the application to the state, and then the state will take a, uh, we'll take a look at it, and it, they would then give us a letter of funding. And once we received that letter of funding, then we would go forward. And you could proceed. Then we would proceed. So, so if for any reason, we don't think we're going to get denied, but if for any reason we did get denied, what would happen? I mean, what would we go back and look at the scope of the project? Would we, I mean, what would you do if you don't get that $2 million from the... the if we didn't receive the entire $1.7, that's, problem, that's problematic. You know, and it's one and a half to one point seven. I mean, it's you know, okay. but so, so what, what, what would happen? I mean, what would you? What would the boards do? Well, if, it, if it's uh, well, first of all, it's uh, the responsibility for the budget and for the completion is of the building committee. So the building committee would have to you know start to deal with that problem. Obviously, if we lost a million seven, the board of selectmen would certainly get involved, and you know, we'd have public hearing or something, and we talk okay. about we we so prioritize. Well, because the bond's been approved, obviously, so you, you have authorization. We know that we have $9.9 .9 million. Yeah, dollars. right, right. So then it would be a question of where, what do we do? Do we scale it back? Do we just do some of it? And so you're saying there would be some effort to have public meetings on that? Well, you know, a hearing is different than a meeting. A hearing okay. would be, okay, this is what the, re yeah, I mean, if it's two, three, and four hundred thousand dollars no, there's not, I mean, the, right. the building committee is just going to handle it. Uh, if, if it's the entire 1.7, I think we need to be as transparent as possible and just say, hey, we didn't get the 1.7, mm -hmm. and this is what the building committee is looking to, to do with the remaining funds. Okay. All right. So, so we should know more at the end of March. That's yeah. what you're, that's what you're well, it, we're dependent on the state response uh, to us, and that could be mid-April. Oh, okay. So they have, do, is there a defined time period that they have to respond to that? I mean, I'm is not, there a set limit? Yeah, I mean, I'm obviously, not, they got to be cognizant of timelines. You got people lined up. They, you know, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure what you know. If they got a 30, 60, 90. Okay, you don't. You don't. Care what I don't. Right. I don't know. Right. You would hope it would. It would be timely. Um, okay, that's what I had on that. Um, the other question I had was, um, I was curious. The BOE returned ninety-seven thousand dollars. To the general fund in their meeting that I went to two days ago. Do you are you aware of that? Uh, no, and I'm hard pressed to see how they could do that midstream. 
So wasn't I. I was a little well, bit shocked as well. It, but they said, they made a statement that they were returning $97,000. They didn't say where it was coming from or where it was going to. But uh, given the fact that they've always cried that they are short on funds and, you know, we, you guys have given them extra funds even after the budget was adopted. You That's transferred. not true. That's not That's true. Not true. No. You didn't transfer any funds to no. Board of Education? No. Okay, because, I, I, you know, again, I've, I have heard that there were capital funds that were transferred that were tagged for highway funds and maintenance funds or capital funds that, that the Board of Selectmen transferred to the, to the Board of Education. Is that true or not? No, not in, in, let me try to clear that up. The, uh, okay. There's, um, when you're talking ordinary, regular, annual budget, you've got four pockets or components. You've got the Board of Ed operating, Board of Selectmen operating, capital, and you capital improvements, and you debt repayment. Mm -hmm. So when you go into the grants and aid, 537,000 or whatever the, uh, the exact number is, the grants and aid is revenue that is received by the town from the state as a grant. And that grant is for capital projects. Their focus is on road maintenance, but they allow us to ask for other capital projects to use the funds for capital projects by state statute. We have to write them a letter, which I did write them a letter. Uh, the Board of Selectmen approved uh, my request. And I wrote them a letter and I said uh, that we would like to utilize the, the, uh, the dollars in the following way. And that included $60,000 for technology. It also included $40,000 for a fire utility truck, $40,000 for a state uh, police car and several other items, including road maintenance. So it's uh, the grants and aid primary focus is on road improvement, but they allow, and with approval by the director of OPM, which we got, okay. uh, they allow you to use it for other capital projects. So that was the, and what the Board of uh, Finance does is they take the grant and aid money and they put it in the general revenue. And then the general revenue money is taken to fund different things like the funding the capital. So most of the capital projects were funded by the grant and aid dollar money that was received by the state. But that's not a transfer. It's a distinct different. It's not operating dollars. It's not extra money. It's not anything like that. It's a statutorily approved method of, of uh, using the funds. In okay, addition. but the primary purpose of the money is for highway payments. The primary purpose is And for, if you for, use it for, for something for, else, you have to make an exception and request that it be used for other purposes, which you did. Which we did. Okay. okay. All right. That clicked, and it was $60,000 to the Board of Education. It was, yeah, on the technology, uh, that was one of the Chrome capitals. Books. Uh, well, I mean, the Board of, of Selectmen, or my request, was off of the five-year capital plan and what they had requested was technology. So okay. uh, when I applied, I said technology, whether okay. it's Chromebooks or whatever else they used it for. So there was no notice of fund transfer re required for that? Because it wasn't transfer. Because it wasn't. Because, uh, again, two meetings ago at Boards of Education, they came up with a, uh, they were transferring some money within, within internal accounts. That's different, and that's their operating. And, and by law, they're meant to report those. And I guess they haven't been. Okay. In this particular, I don't know if you were aware of that. I was not aware of that. Okay. Well, you, can go back, you can go back to their live video and, and see that, you know, they're like, oh, well, should we report this one? Oh, I think so. Oh, should we report all the other ones that we haven't reported? Well, no, we're not going to go back to 2012 and do that now, are we? So. But I want, to, I, want I, to. I guess if there's a requirement to report transfers, and there, if there's a way for people to, to review those, I'd like to know what that process is, because it appears that that process isn't being followed, as it should be, right. and that, and that by would, law. And, and that would be, you know, the Board of Education matter in okay. this particular I, case. I'm just making the Board of Selectmen aware because the notification is meant to come to you folks. Thank you for that. Okay. All right. Um, Dr. Mahoney, did we ever get a letter of official resignation from her, or was it just the email that she sent to uh, 
to parents of uh, small children. I mean, you, you think she's an employee of the town that we would have gotten a formal notice from her that she was resigning. Well, there's, there's a, there's a three-legged stool. And they, you've got the Board of Education one stool, you've got the Board of Selectmen the other stool, and you have the Board of Finance. And um, the, by state statute, the, uh, the Board of Finance control over the Board of Education is strictly the bottom dollar number. And anything else that happens is the responsibility of the Board of Education, in addition to, and additionally, it would be the responsibility of the Board of Education to get the resignation letter. I received a copy uh, the day before it went out to the, or the day of that it went out to the parents. Is this different from the email that's been circulating? That was, that was uh, Dr. Mahoney's email to okay, her. That was not her resignation. I did not see, I did not see a resignation letter, nor did the board. Who, who's got a copy of it? That, well, I mean, again, that would, that, that is a board so, of education. So can I make a public information request to the board of education to obtain a copy of that? You certainly could, you know, okay. you, you, what you Normally want. at those meetings, I mean, because there was a, I guess, a teacher that retired from the schools and they read that letter in the meeting and, you know, because they had to accept it. I, I would have thought the same protocol would have would have applied to somebody like the superintendent yeah, of the, the uh, school. It's a Board of Education matter, certainly, if you wanted to put a question in writing to okay. the Board of Education, that would be appropriate. Okay, I did, I did put it. Let's see, what else do I got on here? Oh, are we speaking at the March 1st? Are, are any of you speaking at the March 1st uh, state meeting that has oh, to the, do with uh, regionalization? And have we draft, has the town drafted a formal position on It's one of the things we're talking about tonight. What's that? It's one of the things Oh, it's one thing you're gonna talk about tonight. Yeah, the, uh, just to answer quickly though, is the, uh, is, uh, I was actually down at Hartford at, and testified on behalf of uh, a increase in the abatement for firefighters today. Uh, I uh, frequently go, you know, two, three, four times a year, I, you know, during the budget season and, uh, for the state, I go down and testify. Uh, and so also submit written, uh, written uh, testif uh, testify, testimony, rather, and uh, also testified on, uh, via written on GPS. I uh, also have drafted a, a letter of testimony for March 1st that uh, was reviewed. Is, it, is there a copy of that uh, available? Or well, is I, that going to be presented tonight? It's, a, it's a draft uh, okay. at this point, uh, and then uh, getting the consensus of the Board of Selectmen. Uh, okay. Do you have a Selectman, quorum tonight? Selectman Ziobro is our third do you have, member. Do you have a quorum tonight with just the two of you guys? Yeah. Uh, it's BOE, you know, it's like a, you know. we, uh, we uh, the uh, selectman uh, the Albros on uh, vacation, but the uh, we certainly represent a quorum. We uh, will discuss it. Basically, what it what um, my position is at this point is that I you know I think regionalization uh, and shared services are fine. As a matter of fact, we are increasing our uh, opportunities with the school for internal shared services. And we've been very aggressive outside. I mean, we have the Granby Ambulance Association provide our ambulance. Mm -hmm. We have all sorts of mutual aid agreements with fire departments in yeah, the area. I, I've, we, I've get seen our, those. we get our youth services uh, from Granby. We get our animal control officer from uh, from Southfield. We get our uh, radio dispatch from Granby. So, anyways, we we do that. So, I'm certainly in favor of those sorts of things regarding regionalization, specifically schools, but regionalization overall. I don't think it ought to be directed by the state. I think they ought to make it voluntary. And I, that's, I, I that, agree. That's basically agree what that my as well. that's so what my draft says. I was just curious if we, you know we were speaking. Yeah, obviously, you're you're submitting something. Board of Education didn't mention anything about anybody attending or submitting anything, but I would hope that our superintendent or acting superintendent is going to be there. I mean, do you, do you, I, I you're, you're not aware? I don't know. Okay. All right. So yeah, that, was, you know, that was another question I had for them. And just to let you know, the uh, uh, is, you know, uh, we have a, I have a very good relationship with uh, Representative Zalotowski and with Senator Kissel. And as a matter of fact, Senator Kissel and I 
did the testimony together today. Right, right. Uh, is so, Tammy going to be presenting? Uh, she, um, I think this is this is on the floor. Uh, Unfortunately, I, I can't make it, so that's why I'm asking. It's on the it's on the education, so I don't know if she's presenting or not. She's not on that committee, so she she could if she wanted to. But there's going to be busloads of people there, and there's going to be oh, plenty I'm of thoughts sure, I'm sure there and will. plenty of information out there, <laughs> and, and and there'll be other opportunities for for uh, comment. I'm sure. All right, that's that's pretty much. So it. we, uh, you, know, you know, as you can see, we're you know we we're a little flexible when it comes to the timetable. If I had twelve people that want to talk, we yeah, probably yeah, would have yeah. one or well, two uh, questions. Uh, and that's what I mean. I was the only person there that because I asked everybody else. Actually, that's probably the most attended BOE meeting that I've seen in a while. <laughs> but uh, and, and in addition to you know coming to meetings and asking questions. I'm always available. Phone call, mm -hmm. stop, you know, stop, stop in. Uh, uh, you're better off because occasionally, you know, I'm at other meetings. You're better off, uh, you know, just calling the, my assistant and asking if I'm available. I'm always available. It's an open door for residents and employees. So feel free to come in if you ever have any questions. Great, good to know. Thank you. So moving on. Okay. The. Uh, Correspondence, uh, the Kearns Regional Community Center uh, has a significant proposal of, of, that they're doing uh, with the town of Granby since that Kearns Regional uh, Community Center is going to be where the Frank and Kearns Primary School building is that's being vacated. And it's a great opportunity for shared services between Windsor, Windsor Locks, Granby, East Granby, Sunbury, Heartland, Suffield, Bark Hampstead, and Canton. And it's a uh, it's a pretty aggressive uh, package. What did you think? There's something for everyone in it, <laughs> and uh, it sounds like a wonderful project that not only benefits East Granby and, and Granby, but other towns like Suffield and Simsbury and so on. Um, it ranges from youth to seniors to uh, an incubator for small business and so on. So it's uh, quite a project, and it, it, it seems like you know, a really good thing. They were looking for a two million dollar bond to from the state to renovate the school. I believe they're in the process of reaching an agreement with with Granby, or they're close to, it or they have. Uh, so then they're looking. They'll be looking to do some fundraising and everything. They're not looking for dollars from East Granby or from the other mm -hmm. communities. What they're looking for would be resolutions of support uh, when it became appropriate to do so, uh, and it, you know, like you said, it's just amazing. Some of the things they're looking at a wood shop, a conference room, families with one child, uh, with young children, art classroom, uh, commercial incubator kitchen, teaching kitchens, community cafe, food pantry, adult daycare. Uh, quiet room, mediation room, uh, community workshop, durable medical equipment. Adult, uh, say robotics, veteran space, and uh, music and studio and audio video. So, the Joe was at a million dollars a year of operating budget they're looking at also. So, It'd be self-funded operation. It'd be a self-funded operation. So the uh, I just wanted to bring it up since periodically they update me and they're getting. They would love to be able to get this accomplished by January. So. Nice project. Uh, so, so they're applying for funding to to the to the state for the communities. Right. The, the only time I'm going to answer the question in the middle. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I have a habit of doing that. Sorry. Also, I uh, have provided uh, uh, the Council of Small Towns uh, their issue brief on teachers' pension costs, of which. I am going to submit uh, testimony for that also, and for the school consolidation and regionalization that we kind of talked about already. One thing that I noticed in reading these is Lamont's debt diet seems to be focused more or less on school construction, almost as though it's being used to help motivate people into shared services. Um, so it, it, they had a little different twist on it than what I've read in the paper. Yeah, they, uh, they, whether he uses the, the bond as, uh, bonding as, as a uh, 
as a tool to accomplish what he wants. It remains to be seen. Um, it, the initial information that I've received is that would be that would affect regionalization of small districts with new school buildings. And right. in this particular case, uh, we're optimistic and hopeful, uh, for whatever it's worth, that uh, you know a school roof project would not be something that he would look at. And that's how I read it. Also uh, is included in the packet is the, my testimony on an act increasing the property tax abatement for certain first responders. Mm -hmm. Currently it's $1,000 for our firefighter, volunteer fire fighters and for our ambulance personnel that are volunteers uh, for the Granby Ambulance Association, of which we have one. Uh, and it's currently at $1,000, it's been $1,000 for 20 plus years. Back in uh, 1998, 99, $1,000 was above 40% of the volunteers' taxes for the average resident uh, residents, and uh, now it represents about 15%. Um, we, all of us, uh, the, the, his, uh, nationwide, volunteer fire departments have, uh, volunteers have reduced by 11%. Uh, and we, we, along with all the small towns, are seeing problems with the recruiting and, and, and retention. And uh, the firefighters, they, they get to be highly trained. They do it because they want to give back to the community and they want to do service. And being able to let them get a larger uh, tax break, I think it certainly okay. makes a lot of sense. So that's basically what I said in my testimony. Mm -hmm. Also uh, testify, uh, submitted testimony on the use of GPS on certain commercial motor vehicles, and basically what that would be um, is uh, they would have, uh, tractor trailers would have to have the GPS that would tell them when they were hitting a restricted street or a restricted area, and in our particular case, that's a really big problem because International Drive is actually, once you cross, it's for about a quarter of a mile, International Drive off of Route 20 is East Granby, and then you go into Windsor, and then you get past the roundabout, and it becomes uh, Seymour Road in East Granby. So you've got Walgreens, you've got um, Dollar Tree, you've got Tire Rack, and a lot of other companies, uh, warehousing and distribution centers, and uh, trucks go the wrong way. Uh, and also, we just received, uh, about two months ago, authorization from the state to declare Seymour as a no through truck street. So a no through truck street plus GPS that would assist them in knowing that they're going into a restricted area so that they could go uh, take a different uh, route, I think would be very helpful. And um, in both of these cases, uh, those were rep uh, Representative Zawitowski was one of the sponsors or co-sponsor and uh, we appreciate her help on those two issues that are important to East Granby. Uh, also included the um, uh, Connecticut Council of Municipalities uh, uh, February 25th report that was on the governor's badge, budget address and it just you know, was a summary of the different things that he uh, mentioned uh, when he was uh, looking at things. Uh, initially, the uh, municipal aid would be reduced statewide by 47 million um, when compared to this year. Our particular case, uh, our net loss was about $139,000 on two million plus. So if it stays like that, it will be within manageable levels. Uh, I also included the uh, timeline for the school roof project. Uh, so, as I mentioned in public comment, we're uh, getting ready to submit the uh, application to the state. Uh, then we would uh, look to receive um, a funding authorization uh, for the state share from the state. Uh, and then we would go forward uh, and ask for a conformance review with the state have the state review our construction documents, get permission, or I'm sorry, authorization to go out to bid, and that would be sometime in April, and then we would go out for bid in mid-April or early May 
uh, and uh, from if things flow properly with the state, we'd want to do this in late May, I mean late April, so that we could uh, get uh, bidders uh, lined up and roofing contractors, contracts signed in early May. So if all that happens, and that's a big if at this time with timeliness, then we would be able to, uh, school uh, closes June 20th, and we would be able on June 21st, or the next business day after, we would be able to uh, start ripping off the roofs. So uh, we would look to go forward with that. And then we would look to have uh, substantially complete at All Grove and at the middle school, high school by August 26th. Uh, also indicated a memo uh, regarding Town Aid Road where we have not received the second payment of Town Aid Road from the state in the amount of $102,000. Uh, and normally we get the uh, second installment in late January. I checked with, uh, with our legislators and they don't think it's in jeopardy, uh, but that would not be funded until the state has a bond meeting since that's how they fund TAR at this point. Um, and I just wanted to make the board uh, mm -hmm. aware of the fact that we have not received the second check as it is. More good news from Mira. The, uh, uh, Mira is the uh, Materials in Innovation and Recycling Authority, and that's how trash is disposed of. Uh, that goes to the uh, town our, our recycling center, and then it's trucked to Hartford, where it goes to the trash to energy uh, plant, where they've had some severe issues that are uh, causing uh, uh, an increase uh, in, in the cost. Uh, the tipping fee uh, in April is going to be, it's not going to be 83. And this there was another letter that came out. It's going to be $81.35, going up from $72 that we currently pay. And that'll be for April, May, and June. And then in uh, July, it'll go up to a total of, uh, of $83.35. It'll go up in the, uh, $83 even, rather, it'll go up to $1.65. So uh, that is uh, in our budget. We'll see that that could be twenty to thirty thousand dollars additional cost to us. And that was one of the budget drivers you mentioned in the uh, meeting as well. And then uh, the uh, there's uh, residents that periodically I mentioned in the board of selectmen meetings. There's residents that uh, uh, can get a free card here at the town, uh, or we'll mail it to you. Uh, and it, what it does is it helps you get a discount on prescription. So if you don't have uh, health insurance or if something's not covered by health insurance, this affinity card can get you up to 30 or 40% of discount. Uh, and we uh, have a steady bunch of people that do utilize this, but I always encourage people to do more. Uh, and all, so it's, it's a, a card that we share with the CCM, the Connecticut Council of Municipalities. It's for free. Uh, there's no charge to it. You know, we have them here at Tong Hall, or like I said, you can email uh, uh, me or uh, the, uh, on our website, and we'll mail you one. So, if you're paying full bulk for something, maybe you can get a discount. Right. Uh, also, the Connecticut, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the Community Renewal Team annually sends us a letter um, and talks about some of the things that they do in our community. Uh, the uh, renewal team uh, is uh, the largest community action agency in Connecticut for over 55 years. They've been uh, doing things. It's a quasi nonprofit, I believe. And um, they, uh, in the past year, have uh, helped residents in, in East Granby, um, provided elder, elder services for a value of about $450 to one individual assisted in energy and weatherization for 48 in, uh, individuals and that was almost forty thousand dollars worth of benefit and then um, and helped one individual with uh, mental health and substance abuse treatment which was about two thousand dollars and neighborhood services 193 dollars so the community renewal team assisted us our residents in east granby to the tune of forty two thousand dollars so we thank the crt for it. Uh, 
also had a uh, resident that is concerned about the signal timing of the new lights that are up on Route 189 uh, at the intersection of Floydville Road and Holcomb Road. And uh, we, uh, uh, I received a letter from the state who responded to the gentleman, the resident, uh, and uh, basically what it is is these are brand new. It's within two or three uh, weeks that they've been put in place. Um, the, uh, depending on how you were traveling with the old ones, you, and it sounds like he was traveling the right way, he didn't have any weights at all. Uh, but if you were on one side of Floyd Bill or the other side of uh, Holcomb, you, you, know, you had a quick light and you got four cars through and then you had to wait for another 20 cars to go through. So anyways, uh, they're on a timing cycle now that it's a standard timing cycle. However, they're going to be authorizing it uh, and finalizing it in the early spring. And then uh, if we still have issues with it, I had police take a look at this and time it, and they thought that the timing was fine. Uh, the resident did not think it was fine. Uh, we certainly will take a look at it. And as the local traffic authority, I can request a study. So we're not there yet, but we'll, we're certainly responsive to the request. Uh, I uh, also let the uh, fire chief uh, know and Representative Zawatowski did about the three bills that were uh, of interest to uh, fire department uh, and Chief Flaherty was down and testified later uh, today. So it was uh, talking about emergency response services on uh, limited access highways, property tax abatement for certain first responders and uh, an act requiring a study of the obstacles to merging or consolidating fire departments up from multiple towns. So that's what we're at there. Also included information I had received from our tax collector regarding uh, legislation that they're looking at uh, at the state. Um, the uh, one was to require all tax collectors statewide to be appointed. And uh, the other is to consolidate the um, assessment and collection offices of any municipality with uh, 15,000 parcels or less by July 1st, 2022. There's, um, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of legislation that happens every year. Uh, a fraction of it gets uh, taken care of uh, or, or finalized in the law. Uh, in our particular case, our tax collector is already appointed. We as a town changed that about eight years ago. Also, uh, put in uh, the uh, worksheets that I received regarding the statutory formula, the proposed governor's proposed budget for municipal aid, and I list everything down. I'll just hit you with a summary page of which, uh, in 2019, it was estimated uh, that we will receive two million two hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars worth of state aid. In the recommended governor's budget, at this point, it's two million ninety-seven thousand, so it's roughly one hundred and thirty-nine thousand dollars difference. Um, the, uh, this is a two-year budget by the state, so the uh, second year would be uh, recommended as two million dollars uh, and two million and five thousand dollars. That would have been that would be a reduction of two hundred thirty-one thousand dollars over the current level that we're at. And I have all the breakdown and everything else. Uh, also, I uh, had uh, uh, additional information. Uh, this is always a, a busy couple meetings with information from CCM and cost and for myself on the budgets and state budget and on bills. And there was additional information on um, issues affecting municipalities, uh, teacher pension costs, small district distribution. Uh, consolidation, special education, property tax credits, car tax cap, although I haven't heard much about that. No, no, no. And so that's where we're at there. Uh, at our last meeting, I had the, uh, the January general government financial, uh, but I didn't have the, uh, I did not have the narrative, so I've got the narrative for you. Uh, so the January budget was uh, our general government budget. We continue to trend slightly, uh, slightly below budget year to date, um, and uh, we're you know, in, a, in a good position at this, a good place at this point. And the following departments are trending over: data services about fifty-five hundred dollars unfavorable to budget. Public buildings is forty-one unfavorable to budget. Police department is trending 
$21,000 on favorable budget. Uh, and uh, the data services is some annualized uh, uh, expenses that we expect will round out. We're probably, uh, by my calculation, about $3,500 over on that line. Public buildings um, is, uh, we're again rounding out some early repairs and everything. Um, I think we'll probably be close on that. Police department, uh, that was, um, as you're well aware, was uh, due to increased state trooper overtime to cover open shifts that were not covered by constables during October, November, December. We're fully staffed uh, now, and we anticipate minimal state trooper overtime will be needed. Uh, since uh, my last report in December, we've reduced the overage by $4,000. The fire marshal trending $2,600 unfavorably to budget due to increased inspection and plan reviews. Um, and the animal control officer is trending uh, $3,000 unfavorable to budget uh, due to uh, increased utilization of the DACO duties by East Granby and Suffield, and Suffield provides them to us, so they needed to add some staffing. Uh, that is also reflected in the upcoming budget. So we're in very good shape, and things are looking good. Uh, one of those, uh, another letter from cost regarding uh, Governor Lamont's state budget proposal and all the different things. I believe that's a different version of the one that we already looked at. Um, also, uh, a, uh, uh, received a uh, what is called the 2013 to the 2017 edition of Municipal Fiscal Indicators, and it's available from the Office of Policy and Management's website. And there's a link I'll put on the town website. So what it is, it's you know, it's a 500-page report, uh, but it, it has all sorts of uh, good information regarding uh, you know, anything from demographics to spending uh, to grants. Uh, so there's a lot of good information on there. Um, so I'll put it on the town uh, website. Also, uh, I will do an East Grammy specific condensed version. Mm -hmm. that I'll, give to you and to John. So. Also, I uh, just wanted to keep the board in the loop. Uh, we had a very successful, uh, not heavily attended, but still successful uh, small business seminar where we uh, uh, we do shared services uh, with uh, with Suffield on uh, economic development, and we uh, were uh, uh, presenting small business conferences because we've been focused. Uh, we've made 13, 14 uh, different uh, individual uh, visits to our manufacturers and companies in the last three months, uh, and they range from anywhere from 50 employees to 350 employees. But we didn't want to leave the small business owners out, small business owner over here. And we, uh, so we had, on uh, February 19th, we had uh, financing the small business. March 19th, we'll be marketing the small business. And April 17th, we'll be hiring the technology for the small business. Uh, we had ours at the Senior Community Center. The next one will be at the, and it'll be on our website, will be at the Suffield Country Club. It'll also be at the, in our Let's Talk Turkey next edition. And then the April 17th will be here in East Gravy at the Copper Hill Golf Club. The, um, uh, we have a series sponsor, it was uh, Windsor Federal and the Bradley Regional Chamber, along with the Bradley Development League, Suffield, and East Granby uh, Economic Development uh, Commissions, and also the uh, uh, Connecticut Economic Resource Center. But the big bucks, the money, uh, the, which was gratefully appreciated, came from Windsor Federal for uh, the uh, coffee and Danish and all that, and, and also pulling the group together. So we thank uh, our business partners on that and look forward to uh, continuing to get the publicity there uh, via the chamber so we get more small business people. What do you think, Joe? It was a good presentation. And the other thing that sometimes gets overlooked is just the networking among small businesses where you can talk to each other and share concerns and that type of thing. So it, it's a really good idea. It was a good presentation. I'm looking forward to the next two. Okay. And the next uh, piece of correspondence is the treasurer's report. Uh, nothing extraordinary on the treasurer's report at this point. 
also I included a uh, response to a, uh, a resident that has several questions. She, uh, you know, uh, I had to, I reviewed for her all the different things that we did to get the uh, referendum information out, uh, including let's talk Turkey a couple times and televised meetings and sending a live green large postcard, uh, on purpose ugly postcard out so that we let people know that the referendum was happening on February 13th. And there was a lot of other things that we did uh, to try to get the word out. Uh, the, um, also, uh, she was curious about the grants and aid and I explained the grants and aid to her also. So. Yeah, that your response was very good. Thank you. Uh, speaking of the referendum, the uh, resolution for $12,200,000, of which $9,951,000 9, was going to be a bond, was approved by the town on February 13th with 299 yes and 215 no, roughly about a 15% participation rate. Um, we certainly would like to see more than that, that's for sure. On um, matters that are financially important. Right, and, and the fact that it went to referendum as well, I thought that, you know, that was handled well, and even though you didn't get a great turnout, it gave everyone the opportunity to... It certainly was transparent. Yeah. Um, moving on to our next order of business, which is minutes for February 13th. I'll make an order uh, to approve the uh, minutes. Okay, and I'll second that. Any question, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried. The uh, next is old business, the Seymour Road traffic signage. Uh, we will put the no through truck signs up uh, as soon as we're able to from a nature perspective uh, with the ground. Uh, so hopefully sometime by the end of March we'll have those signs up. No, uh, no additional information on tax incentives at this point. Um, the uh, Copper Hill Terrace uh, cul-de-sac property, uh, the uh, town attorney has contacted the resident who has not responded as of yet. Uh, the grants and aid waiver, uh, I, per our last meeting, I mentioned, uh, I sent a memo to the Board of Finance, as you are aware, there's been conversation of the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Finance meetings regarding the use of state grants and aid revenue received by the town. The town has always complied with the state statutes regarding this revenue and has used it for road maintenance and with permission from this uh, Connecticut Office of Policy and Management for other capital projects. Has the Board of Finance considered clarifying or restating the use of these funds? Uh, the, I believe that uh, that is a future matter that the Board of Finance will, will end up discussing. I did receive an answer back from uh, the chair of the Board of Finance and basically uh, he said that uh, given the rumblings we hear about uh, what the governor will say, this was written prior to the uh, address, I would doubt that, that municipal grants and aid program will continue in its present form. If it does, however, I'll be happy to raise the question of the future use of the funds at an upcoming Board of Finance meeting. And um, right now, it does show in the governor's budget as grants and aid. So that may be something that the uh, Board of Finance will take a look at. And Just do with these, yeah, don't you? I'm not sure. I've been for meetings for several meetings. I've been great. Where I haven't buried it in paper, but I just buried it in paper. Huh? Next on this is uh, so a right. year twenty draft budget. Right. Okay. The direction from the board of finance to the board of education and the board of fine uh, the board of selectmen was to uh, submit a one percent budget. Uh, increase to uh, the Board of Finance at their meeting. I believe their, their meeting is what, the 14th, I think. If our meeting's the 13th, their meeting's the 14th. And um, so I had handed out the, uh, the uh, draft budget at our last meeting, and then based on the information that I received from, uh, from the Board of Finance, uh, I have worked on a 1% budget. Um, so our current budget is $4,778,000. The new uh, draft 
budget is a four million eight hundred twenty-six thousand dollars, or a forty-eight thousand uh, dollar increase. Uh, 21 of the 45 different department lines are zero or a reduction, uh, uh, so that roughly 47% of the of the lines are either at zero or less. Um, and um, I will continue to work. Uh, and we'll review it tonight, but I'll continue to work on payroll numbers. The contractual increase right now uh, for uh, the two unions is 1.75% in the upcoming year. Um, we're still tightening up several departments, including the registrars and the fire department. Um, there could be a significant uh, software upgrade that we'd be looking at uh, through the assessor with their vision software that provides the, the uh, actual uh, appraisal uh, information. Uh, as we've talked before, uh, this budget would include uh, DPW building structural changes um, and, and uh, how we provide the service and, and our staffing. Um, we uh, also is uh, double checking uh, all of our insurance numbers. Uh, we are looking at a significant reduction in insurance, and I want to be real careful on that. Uh, working on shared services with the schools, uh, which we talked about, and um, you know, there are some things that we'll talk about uh, that we could use more money for. Uh, one of those being uh, school fields that we're now responsible for. Um, also. Uh, especially when John comes back, uh, how do we want to deal with Town Aid Road? Uh, we had the $50,000 amount that we put in the uh, the budget in the current year, uh, and you know, do we want to continue that, or do we want to utilize it for you know for a unified workforce that will help us with uh, some structural changes? So we'll have some some interesting discussions on that. Also, uh, we want to. Uh, remind the board that uh, financial software uh, for accounts payable and for um, the um, payroll is uh, eminent. It's recommended that it be changed by our, our it's an outdated system. It's uh, recommended by our auditor to be changed. And at this point, uh, uh, you know, in the upcoming fiscal year, we'll be looking at that. Uh, one of the things that I've been working with the state, uh, with the, the school on, is one of the things with shared services we've been talking about is maybe business offices and maybe there could be some shared software there. So there'll be more to come on that, but I just wanted everybody to be aware of that. Yeah, just a couple of other things that I would throw out there. We did get a pretty decent return on the personal property audit. We sure did. Um, we sure did. We, uh, uh, we uh, uh, so the personal property, which is, uh, is uh, should, they should call it business property. Mm -hmm. uh, because it's not our you know, own home's personal property, it's the business's personal property. And um, we uh, did an audit, uh, and we spent $3,000 on the audit and received $18,000 back in taxes. In addition to what that, what that will allow us to do is, you know, it, it, it helps with compliance. Uh, and um, so right now compliance is voluntary. So we, uh, in the current budget that we're in, we uh, actually increased the amount to $5,000, of which I recommend going forward we do that. So we'll be able to do, uh, you know, look at more businesses and uh, that will help uh, make sure that everyone inadvertently or not are paying their fair share. And the other thing is the grand list increase. Um, there's probably a bunch of different reasons for that. Uh, I'd like to think some of the additional economic development effort may have contributed somewhere to that, even though it's something that will pay dividends a, a little bit. I certainly than. agree with that. I think the, uh, I, I think, uh, you know, I, I never had any doubt that we always were able to handle any of the economic development that we that we had, that we would, you know, cut the red tape for folks and we'd do, you know, for businesses uh, to help time the market. Uh, we would, uh, you know, take care of them and do uh, provide the services that they needed. But I was looking for a more consistent effort, and I think this program that we started last year is helping us with that. And it certainly was, is helping us with uh, with business relations, and we're finding out good things. We're we, we're talking to folks about 
the Bradley Development Zone of, of a pavement that's out there that they, they, they could participate in. And they're letting us know where, hey, you know, we hired 20 people last year, we're going to hire 20 people this year. Additionally, our business is growing. So it's been a really good thing, and, and I'm very optimistic for the future. But I think you're right. I think some of that grand list is some of the activity that we've been able to do in the last couple of years. Would you like to go through some highlights of the budget here, Joe? As soon as you back on that, there you go. So when I uh, just started to look at, um, you know, I'll just go through the departments. Uh, is the selectman's office um, our budget increase uh, that we're looking for is three hundred and eighty nine dollars it's a hundred and eighty seven thousand uh, dollar request we have uh, the first selectman which is a full-time salary set by the board of finance an executive assistant uh, who's salaried uh, and accounting payroll that is a union employee that works 33 hours um, we um, uh, had uh, Part of the reason why it was a relatively small increase uh, is because contract services last year, or the current year, we had $2,500 in for job descriptions, uh, and we're not necessarily looking to do that uh, anymore that this year because of the way the finances are. If, uh, if we were in times where we could put additional money in, I actually would have probably asked for $3,500 to complete the job description because we're not going to be able to do 100% of the job description, but at this point we're deferring that. Uh, and, and you're referring to the 1% budget. We're still going to be talking about what we feel is needed and perhaps something like that would go into the other. Correct. At, future, yeah, at, at, at our future meeting. And then um, the probate, uh, the, it's, uh, our probate court district is Bluefield, East Grandby, Windsor Locks, and Suffield. And um, we uh, uh, have been doing shared services for many years on that. Uh, and uh, the probate share for East Grammy is $2,000, and it remains at $2,000. I could uh, The registrars were continuing to work on tightening this up. Um, the, we're actually looking at a reduction of $820 uh, for a uh, appropriation request of $48,975. Um, the, uh, the, the labor uh, referendums cost three thousand to thirty-five hundred. Uh, regular uh, elections cost uh, cost a little bit more than that. So there's you know we also have registrars that are uh, once a week have office hours. So you have stipends for them along with uh, when you have the poll workers and assistants and that sort of stuff. But all in all, um, we're uh, I think we're, we're in pretty good shape on the, on the budget. We're looking to tighten up a little bit. Uh, the Board of Finance is flat. Uh, the uh, two components of the Board of Finance budget is the um, person that takes the minutes and the cost of printing and copying the annual report. Uh, the audit is going up slightly. Uh, we're in the fourth year of a five-year option uh, with Mahoney Sable, and per contract it calls for a $500 increase. So that $500 increase is uh, on $23,000 uh, is a 2.2% increase. On the assessor, uh, the, uh, we're looking at a appropriation request uh, draft of $147,000, which is roughly $3,600 more than the current year. And um, the uh, uh, part of that uh, additional dollars is, uh, the significant part of that is on line 223 data services. And that's what I had originally talked about, is that we may have to, uh, uh, some of Vision is powered by Oracle, that Oracle is not being su uh, supplied anymore or serviced anymore. Uh, and uh, so we may be looking at an upgrade. So I put some dollars in for that in case we have to upgrade the software. The uh, Board of Assessment Appeals is $150. It remains as such. Uh, the tax collector, uh, the um, Tax collector, we're looking for an increase of $2,900 uh, or $104,546. Um, basically, uh, the assessor was paying for one of the units that, uh, that uh, you know, it was inadvertently in the assessor budget. 
uh, that it should have been in the tax budget, but the other thing is it's $1,325 of this should actually be billed to the WPCA for it because it's for water and sewer. So when you look at everything, uh, because of the $3,000 inadvertent uh, assessor line uh, uh, in the current year's budget, the $9,000 for data service is the request is $10,850 or $1,850 increase. So um, that's a significant part with labor of what the $2,900 was. The, uh, the trailer, uh, we had a one-time expense for a fraud analysis to be completed this year. And um, the, uh, uh, so we're, we're in the process of working on our fee for that. But anyways, that one time $5,000 didn't need to be in the treasurer. So we're actually saving $4,600 on the treasurer's line with a request for $24,000. Um, the town attorney is uh, flat at 20,000. We do have a police contract negotiation that we will start probably next month, so some of that will be in this year, but uh, depending on how long it goes, it will go into next year's budget also. The uh, town clerk uh, staffing uh, is one, uh, one salary person and one 33-hour assistant clerk. There's some, uh, this, this is a reduction of $1,400 over the current year, and that's because we uh, had a assistant clerk retire and it was replaced with a non-certified assistant clerk who is working to be certified, but a non-certified uh, is a lower uh, initial rate than what the certified assistant is. So that's why we show a salary savings this year as a, um, in the upcoming year as opposed to the current year. Planning and zoning, there was a, uh, a typo where uh, the line uh, was, uh, so let me, I got ahead of myself. So. We, we have in the Planning and Zoning Commission staffing, we have a salaried community development director with a stipend uh, for zoning enforcement uh, activities. And we also have a stipend in this budget for the assistant zoning enforcement officer. Um, and then uh, the get, getting into the training, um, it was supposed to be $3,000. It was uh, understated by uh, $2,000 when it showed $1,000 on it. So we just restored that. So it's really not a, um, anything additional, uh, it's just a, a paper that shows as a $4,000 increase. Data services, uh, we're looking for $111,000, an increase of $1,980 or 1.8%. And uh, I've uh, put, uh, put all the different things in and what we're doing. The, the thing that we're looking to do with, uh, differently than what we're doing right now would be a, um, uh, a monthly charge for Office 365 and email with an iCloud backup, uh, which we think will be uh, helpful for us. Um, but uh, we were able to take money away from other spots, so the net increase is $1,980. Uh, public buildings, uh, we uh, are looking at an increase of $5,000. Uh, we have a 40-hour full-timer, uh, and we add $3,200 in for snow. We have a 20-hour part-timer, and we add in $3,000 for snow and projects. Um, one of the things as we're going forward and looking at uh, DPW and buildings is we're looking for the staff to do more projects and us to uh, do less with vendors. Um, and uh, we, uh, uh, at this point, are looking for $5,000. Um, because we're looking at the 1% budget, we um, could have put more dollars into ongoing maintenance uh, than what we currently did. Uh, and that may be something that we'll want to talk about in our next meeting. Land use uh, is a staffing of a 33-hour administrative assistant and the building official. Uh, the total budget is $131,267, an increase of uh, uh, half a percent, uh, roughly um, so about six hundred dollars. I didn't do the math on that one. Uh, and uh, we uh, also we contract out the engineer, uh, and that's worked out extremely well for us. And we have a fourteen thousand dollar budget this year, and we're proposing a fourteen thousand dollar budget for next year. The uh, fire department, we're still working on that, uh, but uh, we did uh, have a. $2,600, uh, in, a $2,000 increase uh, 
on fees because the MTC, we pay them annually $125 uh, or $8,100 a year for them to maintain our hydrants. And uh, they charge $100 this year, uh, so it's a $2,000 increase. Uh, we pay uh, Aquarian $2,650, and then we have dispatch that comes out of that, the fee line also. Um, I was able to uh, to uh, look at some of the things uh, and, and the fees, and uh, we're still going to be flat in that line, but it's a $2,000 increase by the MTC. Um, looking to put $5,000, uh, uh, first of all, a slight increase in the stipend for, for some of the uh, officers, uh, firefighter officers. Um, the second thing would be to put $5,000 into uh, equipment maintenance. Uh, we're continuing as our equipment ages, as we've talked about in several meetings, uh, our repairs uh, are increasing. And also, uh, I, I reluctantly am having uh, new equipment stay at the same level as this year, which is twenty thousand um, dollars. We again with our meetings that we've been with the fire department, we understand that there's old or expired equipment that we want to rotate out. Uh, but right now, the budget's flat. The police department, uh, we are uh, we're got a placeholder number in there uh, for contractual wise because we don't know what that is at this point. Um, we um, are noticing that we're getting more and more uh, requests uh, to go to the schools for police coverage uh, and investigations. There's uh, uh, these, uh, these are the bane of our existence at the school when it, uh, at schools when it comes to uh, middle school and high school and some um, things end up having uh, police investigations sure. as a result. So, you know, I'm not saying that we need a school resource officer right now, but we may be looking at a school resource officer in the future uh, because it's drawing on a lot of, of our needs of our regular police force mm -hmm. at this point. So uh, overall, uh, the uh, state uh, contract uh, for the resident trooper, uh, there's a, been an increase, uh, a 5.6% uh, increase, uh, and uh, that's at the 85% town uh, in reimbursement rate. And um, so overall, we're looking at a 2.1% increase, or $13,000. The uh, emergency management, we have two stipend employees that work four to six hours on a weekly basis on emergency management. We're looking for a $1,500 increase on that line. Uh, the fire marshal, we're getting increased activity uh, on inspections, but also building and development. Um, so the uh, we're going to keep, uh, we've got one deputy at eight hours, and we'll keep them at that. Uh, prior to 2016, we had three, uh, two deputies and the fire marshal. Uh, we are uh, going to, uh, we're looking to bring back uh, a four hour per week fire marshal, deputy fire marshal, also to increase the fire marshal hours by one hour uh, to 14 hours. So it'd be one deputy at eight hours, one deputy at four hours, and the fire marshal at 14 hours. This is all weekly. Um, there, in 2018, there was 563 inspections. There were 14 fire investigations. Four new building projects are coming online in FY20 for increased, uh, increased plan reviews, and the four-hour deputy brings us back to the 2016 level of three in the department. Um, and I you know, uh, had to make a, a reduction in the fire marshal offer, uh, hours based on the 1% overall budget. We had looked at 15 hours and I backed it down to 14. In the uh, public works, as we've talked before, uh, the, uh, it's been years and years and years uh, since any uh, department in the town has added an employee. Uh, and in, for public works, I'm proposing in this draft that we add a full-timer. We would take the current uh, nine-month seasonal that we have and we would make that position full-time. We would eliminate two uh, snowplow seasonals. And um, if we're doing a unified leadership for buildings and public works, we would uh, rework the job classification for uh, facilities and also for uh, DPW. 
uh, and um, the public works, uh, we would expect public works to be re more responsible uh, for more things than they currently are right now for school exteriors as part of a condo uh, arrangement where we take care of the outside and the schools take care of the inside. We um, uh, would also uh, add a 20-hour administrative assistant to help make all this work and that our, that administrative assistant would be able to uh, to work uh, you know, on, ultimately on um, paper flow such as re um, chasing down bids or doing requests for proposals. So we see certainly see some merit in this. We've informally discussed it as a board a couple times. Uh, now is this time to, to take a look at it. So all in all, with the with the change. Or by the way, we on the supervisor line uh, for the maintenance supervisor, we would see a almost a $15,000 change offset in that. So that offset would would, uh, would reduce the gain from what we're looking at now, the $70,000 gain, and would, it would um, reduce that to the you know, $55,000 range if you netted it out. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that we need to have the discussion on uh, with the full board is uh, road aid and how we want to deal with that. Uh, do we want to keep this line for future road maintenance? Uh, otherwise, with the increased responsibilities and duties of public works buildings, that could help defray the cost. Uh, or, uh, you know, do we want to have a discussion about increasing contingency as we take over some of the unknown costs that we could get from the schools? The nurse uh, will continue our wellness clinics and our health assessments and well-being checks. That's $2,500 this year and in the upcoming year. Vital statistics have always been a very, very small amount, and we're just eliminating the department this year. Uh, we uh, uh, will just pay it out of the town clerk. Uh, it's a very small, I mean, it could be 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars a year. I mean, it's not anything significant. The health district um, are, uh, is increasing the per capita per uh, uh, per person by 55 cents. Uh, so our population is 5,166 off of their latest records. So that's an increase of 55 cents would increase the Farmington Valley Health District uh, service to $31,254, uh, which is uh, uh, roughly uh, $2,800 higher than what uh, the current year is. And that uh, would be a 9% increase. They do have a five-year plan, and they're evolving to doing more of the things that statutorily they need to do. But in the meantime, uh, it's a couple thousand dollar increase to us. So services, uh, we have um, a 20-hour part-timer. Um, and uh, we uh, actually, because of the fact that um, that part-timer does go on vacation, uh, and previously we had looked at 52 years, uh, times are weekly. I reduced it, uh, so it's, it's not taking any money away from her, uh, but uh, it's just reflection of the reality of 52 weeks. Um, and one increase in there is uh, is a contract services line 224 is $500. That's optional. That's our choice. We've never done it before. That's uh, McLean uh, provides meals in town to 16 recipients some who are subsidized, some who pay themselves. They delivered 1,847 meals last year for 11 females and five males, most of who are aged uh, 75 to 94. We've never put in a, a contribution before. They you know, periodically asked for it. I put a placeholder of $500 if that's something that the board wanted to do. Uh, we certainly uh, get, uh, even with that, we're, uh, we're going to be $150 under on that line. The library, uh, the, uh, uh, we provide a lump sum to the Library Association. They're aging building. They have more maintenance costs uh, and utility increases. Uh, they're also looking to upgrade their pay scale to retain staff. Uh, we provide roughly 65% of their budget. Uh, the town will look at more shared service opportunities with the library. Um, as a matter of fact, we're uh, and we have the condo arrangement with them where we were responsible for the exterior, uh, but uh, we noticed a problem in their lobby and we're going to help them with that. So we'll, do, we'll continue to do more services. I was looking for a 2% increase, but with a 1% increase, I had to back it down to 1,000. 
uh, to 1%, and it actually reduced my initial uh, draft uh, by $1,156. So the, uh, that would be roughly a $2,300 increase, or 7 tenths of a percent. Parks and Rec, uh, the, uh, in our, not this year, but the following year, there's a mini bus replacement uh, that uh, we're looking at for senior services. And uh, Park and Rec put in dibs for the old minibus when and if we uh, get a new minibus. But anyways, let me start at the beginning. We have a full-timer that uh, works uh, 33 hours weekly. Uh, she flexes between 28 and 33, but the average is 33. Uh, we also have a 10-hour part-timer for Park and Rec. Uh, and uh, we, uh, uh, at this point, are looking for $1,200 more than the current year or a 1.3% increase. Uh, the um, uh, programs that we have are very well attended. We've got a lot of really good things going on. And it's, uh, Park and Rec isn't just for kids. They are also our activities that we do for, for any age group, including uh, drop-in basketball that we provide over at the high school on Wednesday evenings. The um, next uh, budget item is recreations, fields, maintenance, and that's specifically the school. Uh, we, uh, for several years, have moved the lawns, uh, and we were able to save money as we took away uh, things from the vendor. Uh, we still use a vendor for to maintain the diamonds, uh, and I lay out, you know, that's $11,700, $9,600 for fertilizer, um, and, uh, and other things at All Grove and Seymour. So we're currently at 20, uh, 22500 uh, As we're taking over more of the schools, we realize that uh, we need to improve the quality of the fields a little bit. Um, so we're at 25500 which is $3,000. Um, with a 1% uh, budget, it was actually more. You know, I took a couple thousand away from that. So again, that would be something that we might want to talk about in the future. The, uh, there's, uh, we provide $1,300 to one of the cemeteries in town that is a volunteer association that does the cemeteries, and we provide $1,300, which basically allows them to move the lawns. Uh, so the, uh, uh, we will continue with the $1,300 for that. On the insurance line, and the insurance line uh, cont contains uh, everything from well, all insurance, uh, property, casualty, uh, workman's comp. We, uh, the schools pay for their own uh, property, casualty, and workman's comp. We pay for our share. That's estimated to go up 4%. Uh, we're waiting for, we were able to do bids, uh, we do bids every year, but we were able to do bids last year that resulted in a significant savings for us. So even though we're looking at some increases on some of these lines, the net line is a reduction of $33,000 for 4.4% reduction. Uh, so the uh, dental, we're looking at 26,000, group life 12,000, third party administrator for the uh, 401 is 3,500, employee assistance program is $1,000, long term disability is 35,000, the uh, 401k contribution is in the $100,000 range, we're continuing to tighten up the, uh, the, the numbers. Uh, we uh, had savings on open enrollment uh, in the current fiscal year, and property and cash really came in much better. Also, C, we were part of the Partnership 2.0, which is the state uh, partnership uh, health care program, which we've uh, done really well saving money at. And the CBAC arrangement last year, uh, agreement uh, 13, 14 months ago, uh, actually saved the rate of increase so that we had uh, a net uh, um, zero percent increase uh, in our health insurance costs. Uh, this year, uh, I've been told to look at eight percent. So I, I put eight percent in there. So uh, even with uh, even even with some of the lines that are increasing or holding the same, we're able to reduce some of the costs, and we're looking at a reduction of thirty-three thousand. Sure, this is just for the bonding for the treasurer and the tax collector, uh, and. Uh, We'll just, uh, that was from the days years ago when there was separate departments that were elected positions. Uh, since we don't have those anymore, we're just going to not do surety bond as a department and we'll pay it out of the regular insurance line. Economic Development Commission, of which we talked about before, that we see good progress, uh, greater relations with businesses and more involvement. 
uh, and site, uh, site visits. Uh, we'll continue our shared services with CERC and Subfield in this budget and maintain the $30,000 number. Animal control, uh, as I had alluded to before, we're looking at a $11,000 increase to, the, to our uh, actually $10,000 increase. Overall, we do shared services with Subfield, who provides the ACO. They had to increase their staffing based on utilization of both towns. We get very good service from animal control uh, out of Suffield. And um, it's, um, you know, it's a significant increase, uh, but uh, it's one that I think is a good value. Sure. And certainly uh, seven years ago when we had our own uh, animal control officer, we were at that rate, the $26,000 rate. So we're, you know, all these years we've been able to save money on this line. Social Security line uh, is based on a percentage of payroll, uh, so that is up roughly 1.8% uh, as, as a placeholder. Uh, street lighting, uh, the, um, is, uh, I was originally looking for uh, uh, probably a $2,000 increase based on trend. We'll continue to revisit this. Uh, right now I've got it at $40,000, which is the same. Uh, late, uh, same as what it is in the current year. One of the things that we started to see is Eversource did replace uh, 160 of our street lights with LEDs. And, you know, if we continue to see some savings, then I would be comfortable at the $40,000 number or even a little lower. So, more to come on that. Uh, we got a, uh, a roughly a uh, $14,000 surprise from Mira. Uh, we're at the uh, trash removal. So at this point, uh, we uh, pay salaries for our two attendants at the uh, at the RCC. We have two part-time attendants, uh, two days total for a total of 32 hours. Um, and we also have $1,300 in there for compliance reports. Uh, one of the things that we can do without any money would be uh, consider extending the hours during the spring and fall cleanup. Uh, so, you know, we can, you know, we can just bring somebody in a little later and have them stay a little later. So we'll look at that. Uh, the big uh, driver here is a $14,000 proposed increase from Mira. Uh, it was $72 a ton and it's going to end up being uh, 81 uh, this year uh, that we're in as of March 1st and then it'll be 83 uh, as of uh, July 1st. We're uh, Budgeting a thousand dollars, a thousand permits, uh, same as we have in previous years, that gives us fifty thousand dollars worth of revenue that helps offset costs. We also uh, pay the tipping fee for the trash generated uh, by the residents at the at the uh, RCC, but we also pay fifty percent of the tipping fee on private pickup. So there's a subsidy there. So uh, when you add it all together, plus the hazardous waste co uh, collection and the dues to the Central Connecticut Solid Waste Authority. Uh, we're looking at um, roughly a $16,000 increase, or 7.6%, $223,852. Memberships, uh, of which range from uh, the Tritown TV, of which we're being taped tonight with, to uh, the uh, Mental Health uh, Council, to CCM and CROG, uh, Capital Region Council of Government, the Farmington Valley Watershed, the Metro Alliance, and the Council of Small Towns, and the Visitors Bureau are looking at um, 20700 which is a $1,000 increase because the uh, last year uh, we received the notice from the Tritown that their request was 8000 we budgeted 7000 so this just recognizes what the actual fee is. And it's certainly worth the dollars that we get to have publicity and people are able to look at meetings and, and do their due diligence, which is great. Senior services, so, uh, we're looking, we have one part-timer at 20 hours. Uh, we're uh, looking at, uh, and a part-time uh, board clerk for the meetings. Uh, we're uh, looking uh, at a uh, $655 increase. Um, we uh, I reduced the new equipment line by a thousand dollars. It was uh, two thousand dollars, and um, we uh, basically it's you know you, the percents are always higher when you're talking a relatively small amount of money. It's a 1.8 percent increase, but it's 655 dollars. And um, and then also a lot of senior services at the minibus. 
we're looking at a uh, at a reduction uh, based on trends uh, is uh, and also by removing replacement uh, equipment of $2,000 based on the 1%. Uh, so uh, overall, uh, we have three part-time bus drivers uh, that uh, they run for the food pantry, doctors, pharmacies, and food stores. It's uh, used by a very core, good core of residents. We, uh, as a cost savings measure, got a smaller vehicle. So we have the minibus and to stretch out the hours of the, the life of the minibus, we got a used, uh, Subaru, and uh, for one or two people, we take them in the Subaru. And uh, Subaru's got a lot better gas mileage <laughs> than a minibus does. So now we're looking at a reduction of, uh, of uh, what's that, about $1,400 uh, overall. So it's a 5% reduction in the appropriation request. We got our youth services from uh, uh, youth uh, from Granby, and we're holding that line uh, firm at our level at $18,000. Utilities, uh, we're still working on that. Uh, at this point, uh, we're looking at a $3,000 increase. Um, we've been able to save money on telephone, uh, but uh, the cost of electricity is going up. Mm -hmm. Uh, we had a, uh, a reverse auction to the California kind of Region Council of Government at 7.9 cents per kilowatt hour that went up to 9% on the second, third, third year uh, reverse auction that we did. So that, that's where the, the increase is being driven at this point. Plus, uh, water's gotten more expensive from NBC. The Ambulance Association at this point uh, is uh, flat $46,500. I was looking to, to do a little inflation ride around that, but at this point, that's not in there. Uh, we also pay uh, the um, uh, emergency dispatching and uh, out of uh, this uh, account uh, for the ambulance. So all in all, it's $61,724, which is flat with the current year. 46.5 it goes to Gravy Ambulance Association um, and uh, for the services that they provide, and 15224 for the dispatching. Contingency maintains at, uh, at $54,000, uh, and uh, we can have uh, discussions about that at our next meeting. Um, facilities um, um, manage, uh, maintenance management, we're looking to revise uh, the employee retired, and we're looking to uh, revise the job description uh, so that uh, it'd be less administrative and more uh, of a technician. Uh, so we would be looking to reduce the salary in that position by $16,000. Uh, also reduce car expenses by $1,500 because uh, there would be uh, less uh, expenses to vehicles needed. And overall, we would be looking to reduce this line by $18,000 or 24%. Some of that we'd be looking to offset. Uh, so that in the... Uh, in a, in a nutshell, is uh, what we're looking at at the budget at this point. Do you have any comments at this time, Joe? Just that uh, I had mentioned before the economic development person who brought the audit, which you uh, responded to. Um, the si town signs, where do they fit in all of this? Uh, the library sign, the sign um, uh, on the corner. Um, and so on. See, the signs are in line 1400, building maintenance. The library sign, we uh, we have it made. We're waiting for the weather so we can put it in. Okay. And we have a replacement for one side of the sign over at the uh, at the post office that is gouged. Do we have that replacement? Uh, waiting for weather to put that in. But we do sign maintenance out of 1400. Okay, and, and I, as long as they're in the works and that type of thing, I just have noticed that the uh, signs seem to be getting uh, a little old and uh, need some work. In yeah, and, and we certainly uh, uh, have started to address that and will continue to do so. Uh, nothing worse than a shady, a shady looking sign. Right. So this is, you know, I think you put a lot of work into this and we have something that we can present to them. Uh, on the flip side, I'm always concerned about what investments we may not be making that could pay for themselves and then some. Uh, 
So, you know, in terms of technology, in terms of um, some of the uh, software and, and that type of thing, uh, automation, along with, as I mentioned before, the investment in things that can produce revenue to the town. So uh, I'm assuming we're going to be discussing that yeah, in more detail. Absolutely. And if you can scan back up to your agenda. I have to actually switch emails and then that done. I believe we're at the um, 6A, which is the refunds. Yeah, 6A refunds, yes. Okay, so we have uh, refunds uh, for overpayment of taxes of $80.19, uh, $40, $53.68, and $526.50. And make a motion to approve those. Okay. I'll second that. And these are uh, things that are submitted to us by the tax collector and uh, where appropriate is signed off by the assessor. Uh, so uh, we review them prior to the meeting and then we approve them at the meeting. And uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Or two out of three at least. And uh, the uh, 6B is the uh, Archeon archaeology study uh, from the student. So there's a, uh, there's a uh, history student at the University of Connecticut. Uh, uh, he's a volunteer at the Simsbury Historical Society, and he has great interest in searching for the ruins of locations on a map by Samuel Higley, such as his home, mine, and possible forts. I've done a significant amount of research to locate his home and have narrowed it down to a geographic feature which once bore the name Vineyards Notch. This very location is partially uh, is currently partially owned by the town as well as Galassal and other property owners. With the state historian as my mentor and the state archaeologist helping to guide me, I wish to locate the ruins of these bygone structures and possibly with the landowner's perm permission excavate. I'm narrowing down my search now particularly because there's a grant I wish to apply for of $4,000 from Yukon that could help pay for my equipment, which needs to be applied for by March 11th. I, um, you know, I don't have a problem with this. I'd rather, I'd like to encourage it, especially if it's no cost to the town. Just wanted to get a consensus from the um, board to go ahead and approve yes. it, uh, and tell me you can do it. I agree. And, you know, we will have a waiver from him. Uh, we'll have the town attorney prepare on liability. So just to keep this copacetic, why don't you make a motion to uh, to uh, authorize the first selectman to go ahead with the uh, student archaeological study? So moved. A second, and that's approved. Motion up front. Okay, we're moving into uh, the uh, Hartford Foundation is, um, as we've talked about before, the Hartford Foundation is uh, willing to uh, take, I shouldn't restate that, they're willing to accept an application from us uh, that they would reimburse us for 50% of our renovation cost over at the Senior Community Center kitchen. Uh, we already have $12,000 on the FY25 year capital budget. Uh, so if we did a $24,000 project, uh, we would receive $12,000 match from the Hartford Foundation. Uh, the senior services, um, the uh, senior services director is working on the application uh, that we want to get in in the next couple of weeks so that we'd be able to probably do this during the summer if 
thing from Hartford Foundation looked at it favorably. Uh, what I would need is a motion to authorize us to uh, apply. I'll make that motion. Okay, so that would be uh, seconded by me. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. And I believe that's it on that. Um, we are going to do an executive session, but before we do the executive session, uh, we have the correspondence. Uh, I'm sorry, we have the uh, comments. Uh, do we have any public comment? I'm good. Okay. Uh, and uh, certainly if there's anything as you're digesting anything, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, the next order of business is to go into executive session. We won't take any... Uh, thanks for coming. We appreciate it. Hopefully uh, it wasn't uh, too cut and dried for you. Thank you very much. Uh, next order of business is to go into executive session. Uh, there won't be any votes taken. Uh, we anticipate it to be very, very short. Uh, I'll make a motion to go into So at 8.01. And I second that. Executive session, all those in favor? Aye. Aye, unanimous. And we will go into executive session and be back shortly.